We created our pinhole cameras in September. We hoped that we could see whether or not the sun moving across the sky would affect the photographic paper that we put inside our cameras. We stuck the cameras out on the roof of our school building with the pinhole facing south. Now, three months later, we've brought the cameras back indoors. Uh, we're going to work in a small room where we've darkened out the window and we have a heat gun so that we can dry out the insides of the camera. Some of the cameras were pretty wet inside. So we'll cut off the lid. There it is sitting up on top. We'll take it off in a darkened room and then use the air gun which is right here to dry out the film. We put the lid back on the camera once the film was dried and then brought the camera down to the photocopier. We then put the piece of photographic paper on the photocopier and copied it. Now this is what the photographic paper looked like coming straight out of the camera. You'll notice that there's a pinkish color cast on it. That is because of the paper being exposed to the air for so long. When, when you buy photographic paper, it is sealed in a dark paper bag to keep out the light, and then it's also like double sealed to keep the air out because both air and light can affect the paper. Once the paper has been scanned, we stuck it back into the can just in case we would need it again, uh, sealed it back up so no light would get in, and the scan was sent to a laptop. Scans are sent from the scanner to the laptop as PDF files, which we then convert to TIFF files. A TIFF file is a type of photo file. Instead of developing the uh, photographic paper with harsh chemicals, which, which we could have done, we decided to simply scan it. After that, all of our developing is done with a program called Photoshop. When the image is first brought into Photoshop, it looks like this. Now, all images created on film, paper, or digital sensors are created upside down and backwards by lenses. Of course, the images are also upside down and backwards when they're created by a pinhole. So we need to do a little bit of manipulation in Photoshop. First of all, we rotate the image 180 degrees, and then we flip it left and right around the vertical axis. So now we have something that looks pretty close to what we would have seen if we could have watched the sun traveling across the sky every day. Looking south, we see the sun rising in the east on the left and setting in the west on the right. Just as a quick aside, if we divide the curve approximately in half, we notice that the curve on the left is different than the one on the right. It goes up more slowly than it comes down. These images were created between September and the end of December. So we notice that the sun rises a little bit more slowly and then sets a little more quickly in the afternoon. The next thing we're going to do is invert the colors. You'll notice that the streaks of the sun are dark. Well, outside they would really be the brightest thing. However, they look dark on the photographic paper because it's the sun that affects the photographic paper and it has etched its image or tarnished its image in the silver going across the paper and that looks dark. So when we invert the image we get something that looks a little bit more like what we might have seen, the bright streaks going across the sky. So as a little bit of a review we started with our original image, we rotated it 180 degrees, we flipped it 180 degrees across the vertical axis, and then we change it from a negative to a positive. Next, we're going to duplicate the layer, the negative to positive layer, 
two times. We're just going to call one of it black and white, and we'll call the next one imagined color. At this point, all three layers look the same, but we're just getting them there so that we can use them when we need them. We're going to start by doing some editing in the black and white layer. Even though we call it black and white, there really aren't a lot of black blacks and white whites. What we're seeing a lot of is light and dark grays. Those grays can be represented by this graph right here. Uh, the blacks are listed here, the middle tones there, and the highlights are listed here. What we can do is move the sliders to change that graph and change the picture itself. We think that looks a little bit more like what a black and white photo should look like. Now we can have some fun with colors. Even though it's a black and white image, it is still a color photo file. So we can add color to the file. What we've done is we've done a little bit of sharpening. We've then created a new layer that we called sepia from black and white. And then we we'll add a little bit of red and add a little bit of yellow which will give us a characteristic sepia look. So here we have the original file, or the original um, picture that came out of the can. Then we have a copy of that that looks pretty much like it looked coming out of the can. And then we have a black and white image and a sepia image. And all that remains is our imagined color. That can be pretty much anything you want. It could just have a light tint to it. Uh, it could have some unusual blues and ambers, or it could get pretty wild. Uh, and that's what's fun. We can make it look like anything we want to look, it to look like. That's what we did with our pinhole cameras here at school.